This is a Word Network special presentation. Word Network special presentation. Get ready for a night of prayer, deliverance, and breakthrough with Dr. Juanito Bynum. You need to know tonight uh, that there was a real enemy uh, that won't kill destiny. Uh, but there was a real God. Uh, let's not go let him have it. Uh, and there was a real anointing uh, that's going to break the yoke. Uh, and there was a real power that's going to usher you in uh, to another dimension. Uh, and there was a real authority that's going to let you uh, take possession of uh, and go this is The Threshing Floor with Dr. Juanito Bynum. and we glorify you. We give your name all the praise tonight. Oh, come on, just keep praising him for a minute. We glorify you, God. We glorify you, God. We glorify you, God. We praise you, God. Praise your high name, Jesus. Praise you because there's none like you nowhere. Oh, somebody come on, give him a praise like you know that. Give him a praise like you know that there's none like him nowhere. God, we glorify you. God, we magnify you. Because it's you alone, God. You alone, God. There's nobody above you, God. There's nobody beneath you. God, we praise you. Oh, come on, somebody give him a praise. Somebody give him a praise. Come on, somebody give him a praise. Somebody give him a praise. Come on, somebody give him a praise. We glorify your name, Jesus. Thank you, 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 Lord Jesus. Your blood will never lose its power your blood will never lose its strength your blood will never lose its power to save and to heal your blood will never We'll never lose its power to save and to heal your blood. We'll never lose its power, your blood. We'll never.
Oh, Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody say it again. Your blood will never lose its power. Your blood will never lose its strength. Your blood. gave me that song in Chicago and there's a part of this song that blesses me every time we sing it it gets to this part but I'm gonna need y'all help with this one it says for you are king of kings and you are of love and you're the ruler the
watching my television you just need to raise your hand up and just worship it you watching my internet you need to just lift your hands up and worship him come on right there right there right there you need to just lift your hands up and worship him who oh, you blood Come on, worship him. Worship him. Come on, worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Somebody come on and worship him. Somebody come on and worship him. 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 Yes, Lord Jesus. 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 Come on, somebody worship him tonight. Come on, somebody worship him tonight. Somebody give him worship tonight. So give me 
from the sanctuary. So give me
We worship you in the spirit of water. We worship you in spirit and truth. God, we lift our hands and give you all the praise, God. I love to worship you, Jesus, because there's no one above you, no one beneath you, no one around you, searched all over. There is no body like you. Somebody give him a shout in this studio. Somebody give him a shout in this studio. I didn't say give him just a praise. I said, open up your mouth and give God a shout. Come on, wherever you're looking from. If you're watching my internet, if you're watching my television, come on, open up your mouth and give God a praise because he do the praise. If you praise him, he'll quench your thirst. internet I'm here to tell you that we have an awesome program that the Lord that the Lord custom he customized this program with you in mind tonight and the testimonies that you're going to hear tonight are absolutely positively powerful powerful 
powerful. And I don't care what the enemy has been saying to you, and I don't care what he's been doing to you. I want you to know something, that the final answer lies in the heart of God and in the roots that the Lord has placed in your spirit. And that's why it doesn't matter sometimes. I've been ministering on being rooted, and I've been talking about the subject matter, the root of the matter. And when the people of God, I believe, began to concentrate and seek and search out the meaning of being rooted in him, being confirmed in him, then we would know then the reason why no weapon that is formed against you shall be able. It shall, be, it shall not be able. It can't prosper. It can only be formed, but it cannot prosper because our roots are in God from an eternal place. That's right. If you're watching today, you say you don't even know anything about me, Dr. Bynum, and you don't know what I'm going through, and you don't know who I am, and somebody is watching right now, and you don't even know Jesus, but you don't even know that the fact that you're watching is saying right now that you belong to him. And because the roots were from the foundation of the world was laid and that it was all settled in heaven. The reason why you're watching now and you hadn't planned to watch is because it is your turn and it is your time. And whatever the enemy is trying to do to your life, it will not work. I just wish I had somebody to give God a praise right there. It will not work. We have several people on the line tonight and you don't want to miss the January revival that is coming up right here in the studio beginning January the 12th it is going to be awesome because the Lord has revealed to me that that January is a very powerful powerful month for intercession and change it is a very powerful month because the Lord's interest in the way that the world was positioned He's an awesome God. He deals in this season during that month with the longitude of the earth realm and how it lines up all the way from Africa and how during this time right here, there's a gateway and an opening in the spirit realm that the intercessors need to take advantage of. Come on, somebody. We need to claim it in the name of Jesus and we don't need to be people that keep missing the timings of God and keep missing the windows of God and the gates of God and the opportunities that the Lord opened up with our name on it with that being said I'm going to invite my first guest to uh, come to us live uh, Bishop Barry Gosen all the way from New York City somebody put your hands together for him and um, I want to tell you a little bit about us. His picture comes up on the screen. Uh, Bishop Gosen, we were, we were, we started out. When I talk about windows, when I talk about windows of opportunity, um, Bishop Gosen uh, asked me to come for eight weeks to his ministry in New York, a very successful ministry, powerful ministry. And the thing that I loved about Bishop Gosen is that Bishop Gosen. Uh, is not just a businessman in that sense, but he's a smart man in the spirit. And Bishop Golson was smart enough to recognize that when you go to a certain level in God and there's another depth, he didn't stop reaching because he was a bishop. And so when he called me, he said, Dr. Bynum, I believe my church is ready for the next level. I believe that we've gone as far as we can go right now. And my people and I are ready to go to the next level. And so, uh, studio audience, I went there to only do eight weeks. And I was going to be ministering on the eight watches of prayer. And I believe we are, we just ended 43 weeks. How it started it with one thing. That's right. And it ended up being 43 weeks. Uh, in that place that you see on that screen and we came every single Tuesday that the Lord called us to that place and we just kept going in God and we are continuing to go in God uh, oh yes oh yes and see that's what I love about God because we pray for revival 
but we really don't understand what revival is. We pray for a move of God, but we don't understand what a move of God is because in order for you to get a move of God, you don't just have to be spiritually equipped, but you got to be physically equipped because we can't even, I ain't hearing y'all talk to me. We can't have handle what we asking God for. Amen, somebody. When you said praise the Lord, after about 20 minutes, people all tired. You better get to the gym for the final move of God. You better get on that treadmill so that you can, <laughs> you can finish what the Lord has told you to do. Amen, somebody. And we're going to have Bishop Goldson coming because do a couple of months back, the Lord uh, also released me to give out prayer shawls in that service. And first of all, I want to welcome uh, nationwide, nationwide, Bishop Barry Gosen. Somebody put your hands together for him. Bishop, are you on the line? Yes, Prophetess Bynum, I'm on the line. What, what an anointed moment we're in. Go ahead, start again. I can barely hear him. He's, he's up too loud in my ears. Bishop, Dr. Bynum, I'm on the line. It's been an anointed moment where God's presence is filling the room right mm -hmm. where we're at right now. 43 weeks, God has been met with us, and God is still moving in a mighty way. Yes. I'm telling you, I'm glad we heard the voice of God yes. and obeyed the voice of God, and that move of God is continuing. Uh, Bishop said, I'd like to ask you, um, what what is it that you, what do you think in this hour is is really missing from the body of Christ as far as it relates to people nationwide because you and I talked about um, us not wanting to be selfish about this and this is why God is setting all of this up for you and I to come and do this revival on the word network because what do you think as a bishop and, and overlooking um, our nation uh, and opposed to other nations that you visit because you, you, you visit nations around the world and Japan everywhere. What do you see is one of the problems as to the reason why uh, other people are not experiencing this move? Dr. Bynum, I'm here this, is, this, this is what I'm, I feel in my spirit. And it takes me to John 2, where the Lord did his first miracle, where he turned water into wine. Mm -hmm. The Bible said the people wanted wine, but they already had wine. There comes a time in, in our lives, in our ministries, when there has to be something that that's, we recognize is missing, and we want more. Wow. And we have to be willing to trust God to do something different, something new. And, and and supply our needs not the way we think it should, but just to follow him. The wow. Lord turned water into wine, but he only did that when they were willing to obey him. And I feel in this hour, this generation wants more from God. But as leaders, we have to be willing to find the way of God and, and so that God can do for us exactly what he wants us he wants to do. Wow. I think what God is doing in Hempstead is exactly that. It's, it's, it's wine, but it's a new wine. And he promised us in the latter, that the latter house will be greater than the former house. Yes. And that's why the new wine that he gives was better than the wine they had before. My God, God has my God. something more for us, but we have to be willing to go for it. And, 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 and I heard you. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead, Bishop. I, I heard you on the line praying tonight. God, we, we, we want the water. Yes. And then while you were praying, I heard the Holy Ghost saying to me, the Lord in, in John 7 said, if any man thirst, Jesus. let him come unto me and drink. Jesus. What, what's amazing is that he said that right after they had finished the celebration of the Feast of Tabernacles and had eaten and drank all that they could have. My God. And the Lord was saying to them, you 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 drank but you're still you're still thirsty my god we've been drinking but we're thirsty and god is, has waited for us to run out and then if we want more he says i'll give you water jesus give you another, another drink you put a river on the inside 
And I believe in God that God will start doing that around the world in ministries. Start putting that, stir up that well and, and drawing out new waters and turning our waters into wine and satisfying the needs that we so desperately have in, on the inside. And, 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 and you know, Bishop, I think the thing that really got me because I see um, your uh, prayer shawl laying across the pulpit there because I remember the night that God gave it to us. But the thing that I found to be um, a phenomenal blessing about you is that almost every Tuesday night when the power of God would break out, I would be looking for you and you would be somewhere balled up on the floor in the corner with your cloth up to your face and I would literally have to stop and turn around and say is that the bishop good Lord have mercy and when you would get up your face would be looking like you have been crying and crying out to God for hours and I believe Bishop Colson that that is a reason why we are experiencing a move of God around the world and I'm going to say this because we don't know the power of us coming together to pray because we we call the service a synergy service and God called it synergy because we are more powerful together I didn't hear nobody say nothing we are more powerful together than we are separated and so I believe that when I saw that in you I knew that we were kindred spirit and then when you began to uh, get broken in the spirit like that, then I noticed your pastors and your elders, they were on the floor. And I think that all of us have to come to a place where we don't care anymore. I mean, I believe that the presence of the Lord that is about to overtake the church, it's going to come after the people that are saying, I don't care anymore. I don't care what I look like. I don't care what everybody says. All I know is that I want the presence of the Lord I want this water to fall I want God to do in me what has never been done before and I want to see an end time move of God not just in my life but in my family in my church and most of all in my country somebody ought to give God a praise right there now, 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 now Bishop I want to I want to talk about some things that happen. I want to first talk about as a result of you getting your prayer shawl, something happened for you this week. Because I want people that are watching from around the world to understand the power of what God is doing. I have never uh, been this intense, Lord Jesus, about what I'm doing because I'm seeing from these prayer shawls. The testimonies are absolutely incredible and mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. Bishop, you were believing God for something for several years, and the Lord had me to uh, bless you with a prayer shawl. Could you, could you tell the people of God what happened for you this week as it relates to your, to your ministry? We, we, we've, been, we've been working, and we've been running two charter schools a elementary school and also a middle school. But we believe in, we been believing God for a high school. And we, we asked Dr. Byron to join us and we asked a synergy group and the pastors to join us in prayer that God would favor us and approve that application. And we fasted last week, Tuesday, and last week the Lord answered. In one week the Lord answered and approved the application. And for the first time in our in, in our area, there's going to be a charter high school. Oh, somebody and we are, to give we are God just a praise. praising God and giving God glory because He answers prayer. Yes, He's a God. faithful God, and we're just we're just so happy that we have found out that we can't do this by ourselves. We need prayer partners. Yes, we need folks to help. And the prayer show, it, it's a delight to watch the saints go under the tent and and come under the covering of God and unify our efforts to get the job done. Dr. Bynum, we're, we're indebted for your faithfulness and obedience to the Word of God to come and to stir that fire and to keep the, the flame and the and, and enthusiasm and the excitement of prayer going. We, we, I'm in a praying church now. They used to pray, but man, they are praying now. Oh my God, oh my God. And, 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 and Bishop, this is not just, this is not just for you. Yeah. I want, I, I, I want us to talk about Sister Esther. 
Sister Esther that uh, started coming to the prayer. And if we can put Sister Esther's picture up on the screen and Bishop can testify, this is a woman that had been coming to our prayer. And um, the Lord, I believe the same night, Bishop, that the Holy Ghost fell on me to give you your prayer mm -hmm. shawl, he had me to grab her and wrap her in a prayer shawl. You're looking at a yes, woman. Yes, you're looking at a woman, people of God, who um, her son in 2012, if we could show a picture of him, uh, Quentin, her son in 2012 was murdered. And this woman suffered, I mean, endlessly because she didn't know what happened to her son. She had no idea why somebody would want to kill him. Uh, she worried that did he get involved in something that he should not have been involved in. So we started the synergy prayer and Bishop can testify that when Sister Esther came, this lady was about at suicide level. Like, Bishop, would you say so? Just she, she stood, she came in the front row every Tuesday night and the heaviness was on her. Yes. Faithful, she, she pushed and, and praised, but, but the heaviness was on her. But when you wrapped her and then you gave her the prophetic word that God was going to find the killer before the end of the year, she grabbed that word. And from that night, there was a change in her praise. There was a change in her dance. The spirit of anticipation took a hold of her and expectancy kicked in. And the rest of the story is, is history. God found the killer. And, see, and we have celebrated that. But what I want to go back to, Bishop, is something you just said. And that was when God used me, and I give him the glory, and I say this as humbly as I know how. I don't want to steal credit from God, and that's not what I'm out to do or what I'm trying to do. But when the Lord used me to give her that word, she grabbed that word yeah. with she, nothing she else in sight. I want y'all to hear that. I want somebody, somebody watching by television. So, somebody watching by television. I want you to get that. I want you to get that. Put that screen right here. I want the light to come on. Somebody watching by television. That thing just hit my spirit because somebody is sitting out there. And I want you to know that when God speaks a word, you don't have to see nothing but I double dare you to just lift your hands up right now and start praising God because I'm telling you right now something just dropped in your house and I I just felt the victory in your house good Lord have mercy, good Lord have mercy. Sister, sister, sister Esther sister Esther grabbed that word she grabbed that word, Bishop, and I'll never forget that night. She was on the floor. They had to carry her out. She was, I, God had me to tie the prayer shawl around her because she's a small woman. And God said, before the end of the year, the Lord will catch the killer. And I said, God's going to bring peace to your mind. And, and, and Thanksgiving morning, somebody called her from jail and said, I had to look your, but wait, wait, wait. Bishop, do you remember the next week after that, the Lord had us to pray this prayer. And I want to I put this prayer uh, out there for somebody. He said, I said, God, send your blood down their throats and make whoever is holding the information, make them vomit it up right now. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm talking. You don't know the authority that you have when you pray. You don't know the authority that you have when you get under pressure. You don't know the authority that you have when the devil see you cover up your head and put your trust in God. Somebody called her. And how I got involved in it, I went to something that, and this is another powerful thing. This woman's son was killed and she started doing shutdowns and campaigns for Guns Down Life Up. And that's the organization that she became a part of, helping other women, helping other people.
people uh, with, 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 with their children that have been murdered and comforting them. And, and then I said, okay, she invited me to come because she received the President Obama's award for her work in the city. And that's her and the chief police. They had a banquet in this woman's honor. And I went to the banquet and when I felt her burden, God said he would catch the killer. And the next week when we prayed that the blood of Jesus will go down in the throat and bring it up. Thanksgiving morning, they called from jail and told her what happened. They said, this wasn't no bad boy. Somebody bought a nine millimeter gun and said, the first person I see, I'm going to kill them. And so your son died innocently. But guess what? God caught the killer and God dealt with the killer. And what you got to understand is that when you get under the pressure, what you don't know, the Holy Ghost know. What you can't find out, the Spirit of the Lord will reveal the hidden things. He will reveal the secret things. He will reveal to you what is in the dark place. Are you hearing me? You don't want to mess with God when it comes down to his garment. No, 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 let me, let me say this again. Because the Bible said this. It said that when the woman touched the hem of his garment, it wasn't talking about the hem like you hem on your, on your dress. The woman touched the seat, seat, she touched these strings, she touched these knots which represented the authority and the virtue of God. Somebody said, Jesus said, who touched me? And so this right here, this prayer shawl becomes a replica. And the Lord spoke this to me on the plane. And I went to speak it in tongue. He said, this is still my garment. And I dare anybody to reach out that's got an infirmity. I dare anybody that's going through something that the doctor came solved no matter how long you've been going through it that the lawyer said there is no hope he said if you reach out and touch the hem touch the seat seat grab a hold to the authority and the power of who I am he said the virtue will still come from heaven because it's a representation of what I said who am I talking to somebody better give God a praise right now I said give him a praise right now you need to pick up the phone. 855 word No, no, no. You need to get your prayer shawl because I'm going to tell you this right now. God gave me this. Last time I was here last month. And he said, do the covenant necklace. And he said, and do the prayer shawl. And everybody that called and get their prayer shawl. And the Lord called it a new mantle. And the next testimony that's coming up is going to blow your mind. He called it a new mantle. He said, get your new mantle. He said, because in it, there is a different authority that God has dropped in these garments this time. Good Lord, have mercy. I feel that in the Holy Ghost. And he said, and the covenant necklace is going to represent the fact that wherever you go and you got a situation that you done left at home on the altar, you're going to walk around with a necklace on your neck. And guess what? Somebody going to ask you, what is that? And you're going to say, I'm praying for this situation. Will you help me pray? I'm holding on to the promise of God. I'm believing God that his covenant is true. And if he spoke it, he going to make it good. And I'm going to wear this necklace around my neck until I walk into what the Lord has promised me. Somebody give God a praise in here. Watch this. Yes, Lord. The power of the pressure. I want to go to, 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 to Brother Ivan's testimony. Oh, Bishop Golson, we have seen so many miracles behind prayer and the prayer shawls until every single month we're going to be coming to you giving you what God has done. Uh, we go into Sister Lisa, uh, to Sister Lisa Thorpe Vaughn in Pittsburgh. Uh, Sister Lisa, why don't you tell us, uh, well, first of all, I'll say this. The Lord set it up where I was almost finished for the year and her husband called and said, Mother Thorpe wanted me to come to the ministry and when yeah. they asked me to come it was kind of like a last minute thing like a getting a couple of, just a couple of weeks to, to, for us to get to go, to, together to come and so I got there and the Lord said to me when I was downstairs getting dressed 
And this is why I'm ministering this word to some people who are pastors, evangelists, prophets, doesn't matter. And this is why you got to walk with a sensitized spirit to God. He said, when you get upstairs, don't worry about what it looks like. Don't worry about the crowd, but I want you to move in the supernatural. So when I got upstairs and I began to move in God, I began to preach people of God as if there were five to 10,000 people in that place. And I kept saying to the Lord, this is too heavy for what's in this room. But I remember the last night of the meeting. The Lord sent me over to Sister Lisa and her mother. And I began to speak in tongues. And the Lord said, release the prayer shawl and the prayer necklace to them. And the Lord began to prophesy a word to her mother. That the Lord had her seed in his hand. And that no matter what she see the devil try to do to the leaves, don't she move. And oh my God, I, know, I, I didn't know what was coming. Do not move. Well, prior to that, her brother, they found a spot on his lungs. Show the picture of Brother Ivan. They found a spot on his lungs. And the spot, they had to go in and take like a third of his lungs. And he was in the hospital. And I would let Sister Lisa pick up the story from there. Tell us what happened as to the reason why you know for a fact that the prayer shawl and the prayer covenant necklace, it worked. Thank you, Dr. Bynum. This is just such a blessing to be able to have a testimony for my brother. When you were in Pittsburgh at the prayer crusade, my brother was in the hospital and we took the prayer shawl and the prayer shroud up to him and put it three you, you gave me three to put on his body and you said put the prayer shawl uh behind his head maybe two days after that he was released from the hospital but on last week he got sick again and had to go back to the hospital now it's, the testimony started when they when he first went in maybe six weeks ago uh from a cold early this year and they thought that what they saw was cancer and we began to pray and I just went on social media and said, I'm doing seven days of seeking and the body of Christ everywhere. I saw was watching the word network and watching you. And I said, I'm just going to do seven days of seeking and pray and fast, believing in God to heal him. That it's not cancer. He went back in and it was not cancer. Yes, it Lord. Cancer. It removed the tumor. They were prepared to do radiation and chemo and everything, but none of that. God said, not so. Come back out and has gone back and forth, but just last week, after we had prayed and after we had left Pittsburgh, he was had gone back to the hospital. And on last the evening, I got a call from my mother, and they said Ivan is having an episode. And I said, "What do you mean Ivan is having an episode?" He said, "Something happened. He's having an episode." And I called my other brother who was at his room, and he said, "Lisa, I'm standing outside of the room. The nurse won't let me in." He said, "But I keep hearing her say Ivan, Ivan." come back, Ivan, Ivan, come back. And my heart just dropped and I said, God, this is not what you said. You said he could go through the process. And all of these people are praying all over the world. And I immediately texted you, Dr. Bynum, and I, I said, please pray. My brother is having an episode. I had no idea. I was in Dallas and he was in Pittsburgh. And my brother just said, all of a sudden, doctors came from everywhere and began to just try to figure out what had happened. He had flatlined in the hospital for a matter of seconds. And then all of a sudden he came back. And hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got we, we got to back that up. When you called me and you said he's non-responsive, they cannot get any pulse, anything from him. He's non-responsive. I jumped up and ran and got a prayer shawl and a necklace and a shroud. I threw it up in my chest and the Lord took me up in prayer. Antoinette, are you there? Yes. Uh, 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 Sarita, yes, are you there? Yes, Tell them yes, literally, yes, it, yes, it felt like a power took over that house. I, the people of God, all I can tell you is that I don't remember ever going into a realm like that. It was like I felt like I left this world. And all I know is when I was coming back in prayer, I'll let you all tell what what it literally felt like i'm telling you you can pray until you bring yes. the presence of god down in your house good lord i just yes, felt that god. right there 
I said you can yes, pray God. until you can bring heaven down in your house yes. to shake the situation. Who am I talking to tonight? You better not sit there and let the devil tell you that there is no power in prayer and the prayer shawl because the devil is a liar. I grabbed that prayer shawl. Antoinette, tell them what it felt like because it, it felt like a miss hit that house. Yes, ma'am. God bless you. We were in the lower level on the house. And we just heard Dr. Bynum go up in tongues for Ivan. We didn't know who she was praying for, but the level of intercession, we know that it, it, there was an urgency in the atmosphere. We just heard a boom walking through the house, boom, boom, and she just ran. As she began to run through the house and prayed, she was fervent in her prayer. The level of intensity, we felt it at the bottom of the building. Her prayer, we've been around her for a long time. And so we know that when we heard her praying, that we can tell that she was wrestling with a spirit. She was really bum blocking, blood blocking the hand of the enemy. We, yeah. we, and we felt it so much that we began warring and praying. And she didn't know this, but she shifted the atmosphere by the level of intercession and the fervency. This was a different fervency she had and intensity for Ivan. And so much so that my sister and I, Sarita is on the line, we began touching and agreeing and interceding for him, not knowing, but all we could tell was that it was a life and death situation and this fervency in prayer went on for a while because she did not stop until she felt a peace in her spirit and knew that she had the victory over the hand of the enemy. And let me, let me, and, 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 and to God be the glory. But all I can tell you is that when I put that prayer shawl up in my chest, it felt like a hole, like I cannot describe it. It was like I was no longer breathing by myself. I was, I was breathing from another breath. And all I know is when I came back in the spirit into my natural body, I was saying, come back, come back, come back. And then my phone started vibrating. And Lisa said, he's back. He, he came back. She said, and the nurse was saying, come back in Pittsburgh. And I was saying, come back in New York. And that's why I'm here to tell you that when you got a prayer connection in your house, when you got a prayer connection in your house you are being oh my god you are being skyrocketed into a level that you know not of you are receiving help from out of zion who am i talking to good lord have mercy i know that god that night brought him back from the dead because in the prayer the lord had me to pray i said i speak life and i command you to go back into the feet go up through the body and when he came back he told sister lisa all i know is i felt a heat that started up my feet and it came through my body up through my head and my eyes woke up and i came back somebody better give god a praise somebody better give god a praise eight five five seven three oh word Eight five five seven three zero oh word. I'm telling you, it's time for us to go under the tent. Eight five five seven three zero oh word. You need to pick up the phone. The operators are standing by. You don't want to miss an opportunity for this particular kit not to be sitting in your house. You don't want to miss that because I'm here to tell you that there were times when God would give us an opportunity. You don't know what's up the road and around the corner, but let me tell you something. Prayer is not an emergency. Prayer is preventive. And when you have a prayer connection in your house, when you have a prayer shawl in your house, when you are obedient because God is saying, I want you to pick up the phone and do this. You already got something standing in your house to face the enemy before he even gets there. You already got a connection, something that you can grab a hold to and tell the Lord, God, you promised. Who am I talking to? I just heard that in the Holy Ghost. Somebody that's got a prayer shawl that's out there that's watching, you ought to grab a hold to the strings and just start saying, God, you promised. I said, I 
filling of the Holy Ghost. If you got a pressure and you watching my television, I said the Holy Ghost just gave me. Grab a hold to the strength and begin to tell the Lord, God, you promised. God, you said in your word. God, your word is unfailing. God, your word is unshakable. God, I know that you able. God, I know that you hear me. God, I know you've already answered up. And so I bless your name up. And so I praise your name up. And so I give you glory up. I give you glory for a divine answer. I give you glory up for a complete work up. I give you glory up for sustaining power up. I give you glory up for keeping power up. I give you glory up for delivering power up. I give you glory up for healing power. Somebody give him a praise up. We praise you now up. Because you already warned up. We praise you now up. Because you are the only one up that can break the seal. And so God, we trust you now up to break this thing up. We trust you now up to break this thing up. We trust you now up to break this thing up. Somebody give God a shot. Somebody give him a shout. Somebody give him a shout. Give him a shout. Good Lord, I feel something. I need y'all in the studio to worship God because I feel something. I feel something. Somebody worship God right now. Somebody worship God right now. I said worship God right now. Worship God right now. Come on, worship God right now. Worship God right now. Worship God right now. Worship God right now. Come on, worship Him. 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 Hey, He's shifting it now. Lord, I'm shifting it. Hey, my shadow. God, we're going to the last testimony. But I'm gonna tell y'all in this studio, y'all better be doing better than what you're doing because I don't lay hands on dead people. So you sitting up in here patty-caking God, somebody gonna miss it. Cause I'm here on a I didn't come to give you nothing. I came to help you stir up something. But if you ain't got nothing, you gonna have to get that from God. I'm not here nobody talk to me. Y'all trying to make this a show, but this is a breakthrough. This is a dressing floor. Now I want somebody to start praising God. I want somebody to praise him for real. And I'm a shot. I already know who I'm gonna lay hands on. I can already see you right now. Cause Juanita Barnum ain't got nothing for you. God is the one that got it. And if you can't reach for him, it ain't nothing I can do for you. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody give God a praise. One final 855-730 word. You need this in your life. Show that, show that picture, Quentin, of Sister Lisa with the necklace on. Show that picture. Before I go on to the next and the final testimony, Sister Lisa said, when you gave this package to me, she said, I put this necklace on and I told God, I'm not going to take it off until I see you complete the work in my brother. And I want you to know nobody would ever make me believe that had she not committed to become connected with what God had given me, he probably would have died. And matter of fact, I know he would have stayed dead. But because, because God kept his word. When God makes a covenant with you, he doesn't break it. And you watching my television and you wondering, well, I already got a press y'all. But wait till you hear this next testimony. God get me to straighten you out. Because there's situation in your house. You sitting there talking about Christmas and what you need to be doing is buying your relatives this prayer kit for Christmas because they're going to need it when Christmas is over when they get to opening presents you got to ask yourself will they be able to open their spirit to God uh-huh. yeah 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 will they be able to open their spirit to God 
855-730 word. There is power in it. Oh, y'all take y'all seats. I'm going to the last testimony. Mm. Pastor, we have Pastor, Pastor Soroya on the line. Pastor Soroya on the line. Yes, we ma'am. Want, how are you, sweetheart? I am so blessed, Prophetess, and I'm just so excited um, and privileged to be on this line tonight. I, I, I want you to go back and tell me, tell us quickly, um, what happened to you and, 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 and what year it was uh, as it relates. People of God, what you're getting ready to hear right now, what you're getting ready to hear right now, you, 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 you're going to really change your mind about some thoughts that you've had about the fact that I got to press y'all already. Oh, my God. Because I hear some of y'all, I hear that in the spirit. So some of y'all say, I already got me. I, I got one seven months ago. I, I, I already got one. I, I got one nine months ago. But what you don't understand is that there are certain mantles for certain things. I just said something right there. I ain't hear nobody talk to me right there. Because guess what? Elijah, Elijah's mantle. Elijah's mantle, he tossed it to Elisha. And that mantle was the opening of the crossing over. Are you hearing me? Jesus' mantle, when the woman reached out and touched it, it was for healing the issue of blood. There are different mantles that people wear for different things. And there are different times when the anointing will fall on a mantle for a different reason. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. There are times when I, I cannot tell you how many prayer shawls I have bought. And the Lord have told me to wear them for a season and he told me what they mean and when the right time come he send me places and said this is for them you've been wearing this pressure for this person right here because what the pressure is going to do for them is going to correct something then he'll help me to get another one and he'll help me to wear it because this one right here is going to heal somebody and then he'll help me to get another one and he'll say this one right here is for witchcraft and deliverance and I'm telling you I would walk in the spirit underneath that thing but when I get to the person that it belongs to it's as if God had to throw it on them and the God of my son they behave and I've seen the Lord deliver them immediately so you about to change your mind and while the operators are standing by you better pick up the phone now 855-730 word 855-730 word you need to get this prayer shawl and this covenant necklace because God is going to do something in your life a hundred and thirty three dollars it's nothing it listen what God is asking you to give as it relates to this is nothing nothing in comparison to what God is gonna do for you somebody give God a praise right now somebody give him a praise right now pastor Soroya tell us tell us what happened to you and what year it was oh my god it was it was 17 years ago it was sick. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. You, we, can, we can hear you clearly. Yes, it was 17 years ago. I was going to church at the time, but I had one foot in and one foot out. It, it, was, it was like playing church. And, and so I, I wasn't churched, and I was with a man at that time. Um, I dated a man at the time, and he invited me on vacation to Mexico uh, to a place called Cabo San Lucas about 17 years ago, I checked in a hotel called La Finistera. And not understanding anything, I knew God had been calling me, but I, I just didn't understand the magnitude of what God was trying to do in my life at that time. And, and sometimes, Mother, we have kind of one foot in God and one foot out, so so we think we're saved, but but but, but we're not delivered. We, we really don't understand the magnitude of what God is doing in our lives. Yes. So I was very excited when I got this invitation, all expenses paid, to, to go to Cabo San Lucas and to check in this hotel um, called La Finistera. And um, I went to, um, to an island that they have out there um, called La Brisis. And, and when I went out there, um, I, I knew not to go in the water. I knew I didn't know how to snorkel or anything like that. And so I didn't want to go into the deep. I stayed at the edge of the water. And when I went in that water, on the edge of the water, I remember just sticking my head a little under because I said, I will not go into the deep. I I'm going to stay at the edge. And, and I think that's what God was saying to me is that you won't come into the deep. You you're staying on a surface relationship Jesus. with God. But you won't go no deeper. And, and so I stayed on the edge. And when I put my head under, I saw what I thought 
thought was a little boy. I, I thought it was somebody playing under the water and trying to get fish to come to me, and it did. And I lifted my head out of the water to thank the boy for bringing these fish to me. And when I looked around, I did not know where I was. When I say it was a toad that pulled me out so quickly into the middle of the sea of Cortez Jesus. that I could not get my way back. I fought with everything that I had. I called on God with everything that I knew. I could not get out of the water. I pleaded with God. I reminded him of how I, I went to church sometime and how I sang in the choir sometime. I, I bargained with God. Nothing would pull me from the water. Nothing. Jesus. And in that sea, 17 years ago, I drowned to death. I drowned to complete death. I mean, okay. spirit separating from the body. And me confused thinking because I had gone to church and I knew I had called on the name of Jesus. I just knew I was saved. So I know whatever happened, I made it. The scariest thing was, prophetess, I drowned to death and demons from hell came for my soul. Jesus. You literally I, saw that. I was that. confused. You, I was confused. You literally saw because that. Because I, I knew I went to church. You literally I, I knew saw, I went to church. So you so, literally saw demons come come at you while you were under that water. Yes, ma'am. I could, I could picture the demons. As a matter of fact, in the Bible, they named them. They named them. And, and when I saw, I thought it was God coming to save me. I could see angels warring for my soul. And I cried out to God just for one word. And I would not get a word. And I heard a sound in the middle of that water as I drowned to death. I could remember dying completely Jesus. in that water. And when the demon came from my soul, I was confused because, because God said, listen, there's a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. My God. God said, many are going to cry, Lord, Lord, but, but I'm, he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, because I never knew you. And you Meaning, say, and you I was in you, church, but I was never in the spirit in prayer. Wow. Wow. I, I was never there. And when I say it was confusing, I, I think it's going to shake people, because I think a lot of us that go to church think we're automatically in. <laughs> Because we called on the name of the Lord. We're automatically saved and we're automatically delivered. But God was like, I never knew you. You had never tapped into a realm of prayer. You had never been there. But before I died, I remember a sound. You cannot forget the sound when you're dying. You will never forget the sound. And there was a sound right before I died when I pleaded with God. And my body was up dead. God said, if you're not hot or cold, I will vomit you out, out of my mouth. When I got to the shore, now somebody told me the rest of this testimony. When I got to the shore, I remember hearing one word, and it was Lahayim. It was Lahayim. And Lahayim means live. Now, I need to jump a, a little bit, Mother, because after that, my, my spirit had separated from my body. Wow. I didn't know after that if I was alive or dead. I was in my body and out of my body at the same time. And how long did that God last? had raised me from the dead with a sound how and long with a word. It, how long did it take you? How long did you stay? Because I want people to hear this. How long did you stay walking around on the earth after you came back to life? How long did it take you to come back to life? Because you shared with me something so powerful that you were walking around, but you had not been recollected back so it was like you was in the world but all of you wasn't back connected to you how long did that last my god this was this was month after month after month this had to be at least six months literally so much to the point i could be walking down the street and i could watch myself walking if my spirit had separated and i couldn't find my way back into my body i prayed for death I was suicidal. I didn't know what to do because it, I was alive, but yet still dead. And then somebody I, I was alive and thought I was saved, but I was still in a dead state. And I would never forget, I, I was going to a church in the Bronx, and a young lady said, please let me help you. She saw the torment over my life, that spirit of death over my life. And even though I had raised from the dead, I was not attached. And I know that sounds crazy, but I was not yet attached in my own body. And I didn't know how to get it back. She invited me to a prayer at New Greater Bethel. You're talking 17 years ago now at New Greater Bethel, and I put my head down. It was 5 o'clock in the morning, and I said, I don't want to go. I don't want to be there. So I went there and just closed my eyes to go 
hearing that sound. Because I said to myself, that person knows the sound. You had Crenshaw's at that time. And you took a Crenshaw from the mantle that you have been leaning on at Bethel. I have it right now on my desk. You wrapped the mantle around me and said, get saved for real. The power of God hit me so mightily that they, they took me to the altar and I laid out. I must have been out for an hour. But literally what it did was resurrect my spirit back Jesus. into my body. That I became whole again. That my body wouldn't shift out and wander around when I was alive yet dead. My God, my God, my God. But see, the point that I want to make right here, and I want to stop you right here, and this is what I want to make this point to you all about prayer. I didn't know this lady. Now watch this. I didn't know her. I had never met this woman before. Never. But the sound that she heard in the spirit realm underneath that water was the same sound she said i know that lady's voice what am i saying to you all here when you are praying you don't know the range that your voice is reaching in the spirit are you hearing me you don't know who you getting set free that you have never met before who am i talking to See, some of y'all sitting in here right now, and you can make a sound out of your spirit that'll shake the very gates of hell, deliver your relatives. You watching my television. I know you in your house, but for about five seconds, you need to turn that house up into a sound that the gates of hell would have to turn it loose. Everybody, he got held hostage. Somebody give God a shout. Head up, oh, shut them up. He come up on something of a higher. I'm telling you, it's your voice. Don't let the devil tell you that your voice ain't got no power. Don't let the devil tell you that your voice is not heard. But the gates of hell can hear your voice. Death can hear your voice. Sickness can hear your voice. Disease can hear your voice. All you gotta do is open it up. Give God a shout tonight. Who am I talking to? Hey, hey. Oh, somebody better give him a shout. Somebody better give him a shout. Don't tell me about the power of the prayer show. Don't tell me about the power of the prayer show. God had me praying under the prayer show for somebody I didn't even know. For somebody uh, that was already dead. Uh, for somebody uh, that was drowning. Uh, who uh, is God? Uh, got you uh, traveling for? Who is your assignment? And a pressure from 17 years ago. This woman was asked to minister at a conference and she took that pressure to the conference and she was supposed to be teaching a class she laid that same pressure this happened a couple of months ago across the podium and the power of God fell and shut the conference down and there was a girl there that had tried to kill herself twice and Sunday morning before she got to the conference she tried to kill herself that morning and God had her to wrap that pressure around that girl and the Lord delivered that girl from a pressure from 17 years ago you better give God a praise you better give God a praise I said the pressure got an assignment in it word you better not miss God he said these pressures are the pressure of the authority of God oh my sister, yeah. he said these pressures that is coming from this place into your house is a pressure of authority when you get it in your house God's anointed is gonna come upon you and the devil is gonna have to pack 
over your family, out of your life, because the authority of God is going to stand up and defend you. Somebody give God a shout right there. If the line is busy, keep on trying because the enemy don't want you to have your authority. The enemy don't want you to have a divine connection. The enemy knows the power in connecting with something that the Lord has called consecrated. The Bible said the reason why God had them to do this. He said, make them for generations to come. But the thing that runs between the cord of the Old Testament, because somebody said that's the law, but the cord that runs down the middle of the prayer shawl is these words right here, that the people may be holy, number one. Number two, that they will be consecrated. And number three, when they come under the prayer shawl, that they will remember to walk in the ways of God, that they will remember to stand in what God stands in. They will remember to stand with what God stands for. They will remember the power of God. They will remember the authority of God. They will not shake in whom they believe. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. The cord that runs in the prayer shawl is a fact remains that God, he watches over us. That God, when you get under the tent, when you put it over your head, you get the attention of God. You get an audience with God because he he recognizes you uh, as his consecrated one, uh, as his obedient one. Uh, and these, he said, uh, is for the power of authority. 855730 oh, word. 855730 oh, word. Pick up the phone now. Operators are standing by. Not only are we sending you the pressure, but for that seed of 107, we're going to send you the necklace too. Because you have to be able to wear and keep your covenant with God and remind God that I'm not ashamed of what you're going to do because I believe in every word that you speak. Let me, let me, let me say this, let me say this. And then last night, last night when we talked about mantles, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Y'all just got to forgive me. Y'all just got to forgive me. Y'all just got to forgive me. God, I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. After the presence of the Lord in this place. Good Lord, that is And last night, last night the Lord had me to call Pastor Soroya out. And he said, Now I want everybody that the Lord is leading you to come up for the prayer shawl. Tell them what God showed you about this new prayer shawl. Thank you, Jesus. Night and 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 prophetess called and said, "Come up for the new prayer shawl." Now I had my 17 year old shawl, and I understand that that shawl has resurrection power in it. But I heard God say, "For a new season, you need a new mantle. For a new season, you need a new mantle." My God. And, and so I went up and I sold the seed because I understand the resurrection power on the mantle that I have from 17 years ago. But God said you're in a new season and it requires a new mantle. So you have to sow a new seed. Jesus. So I sold the seed for the shroud and the new mantle and the necklace. And God said that was for destiny. I walked up and, and mother laid hands on everybody at the Synergy Center. Now, mind you, God had called me from 17 years ago that I had not seen prophetess back to these 43 weeks in the Synergy Center. By that time, I'd been pastoring and God told me, bring the entire ministry. We stayed for the 43 weeks and yes. last night, God said, take that new mantle with the necklace I'm wearing it right now and the old mantle is over my desk. The new mantle is behind me. He said, you need a new mantle and this one will be for destiny. This one will be for destiny Jesus. because the one from before stopped the enemy from killing you and dragging you to hell because Jesus. he wanted to abort your destiny. 
and I went yesterday and I had the, the new mantle and properties laid hands in my chest and, and I don't remember everything that was said but the same power that hit me 17 years ago and I told my husband driving home that was that same hit and I heard her say go and, and the go was like a boom and said go to the nation and I took that crash off and not 24 hours later I am on the word network telling my testimony to the nation my God my God to the nation so where the, the first one was for resurrection, this new one that you're sowing into has destiny and purpose to launch people into their God-given purpose to push. If providence lays a show on you, it will propel you. And every demon from hell that tries to stop your destiny, take your life, stop your purpose, abort the plans of God, will be under the blood of Jesus and you will go to your intended purpose in God. Oh, oh somebody ought to give God a praise right there. Jesus, somebody ought to give God a praise right there. Come on, lift your hands up in here. Come on, lift your hands up in here. Eight five five seven three zero. word. You need to pick up the phone. A new mantle a new mantle it's a new mantle it's a new mantle I'm telling you I could feel it in the spirit I could feel it in the spirit because when she said for destiny and purpose because we have not had the authority to walk into where God is taking us and somebody that's watching I'm telling you these testimonies are real living testimonies Another young woman that couldn't join me tonight on the phone. Sister fell out, rushed her to the hospital. The doctor said something was wrong with her brain. Some kind of foreign disease hit her brain. She was in a coma. Same thing, got a prayer shawl, got the prayer shroud, and she opened her eyes up day before yesterday and came out of the coma. And the doctor said she was going to have brain damage, but she talking and know everybody. I'm here to tell you that there is power in coming under the cloth. I don't shout. There's power in coming under the cloth. There's power in the divine obedience of obeying God. You sitting there wondering whether or not you should obey God. And if you got to wonder whether or not you should obey him, then you know that there is an enemy that is warring against the fact that he knows that when this connection comes in your house, he knows that it carries an anointing that's going to drive out demons and devils. I know what I'm talking about. This thing is sacred to me. We pray over these prayer shows for real. And when it comes into your house, it's a connection connection with people around the world but everybody that's under one we become one nation the thing that God showed me too the other day he said when the man looked out and hired the prophet to come and curse Israel the Bible said they looked out and saw them under their tent and the man said I cannot curse these people but the Lord has blessed them and it cannot be reversed they said when you put the prayer shawl over your head the rabbi said that it looks like a man standing under a tent and I'm here to tell you that when the devil sees that you are standing under your tent he already knows that I cannot curse these people but the Lord has called them blessed and I cannot reverse it somebody give God a praise right now 855-730 word pick up the phone now operators are standing by it's your season it's your time it's your turn All of these people came online tonight to encourage you and they have nothing to gain by their testimonies. Nobody paid them to come on the phone and say that. You can't make up these cases. They are real cases. They are real situations just like yours is. But they are real situations that the Lord has turned around just like he's going to do for you. Oh, I don't shake at the promises of God. I don't shake at what I'm saying to you tonight because I know in whom I believe. 
I've watched him do the impossible. And when the Lord speaks something, we have one responsibility, and that's to be obedient to what he says. You may not understand it, and you may ask yourself, is it worth it? But I'm here to tell you, these are just a few of the testimonies. You ain't heard half of what God has done. But the Lord spoke to me and told me to go to Kevin and ask him, can I have this kind of program? Because I know you all see all the time the prayer show commercial, the prayer call, but no, it's time for you to see that there is power in what is happening. It's time for you to see that this is a yoke-breaking thing, that this is a divine connection, and that you too, like the woman with the issue of blood, when you touch the hem, you will be made whole. I don't care how many years it is. I don't care what the devil is trying to do. I don't care what he said about your children. I said if you touch the hem, God will do the work. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what the lawyer said. I said the Holy Ghost told me to tell somebody that if you touch the him, I'll do the work. Somebody ought to turn around and tell your neighbor that if you touch the him, God will do the work. If you in your house, turn around and tell somebody in your house. If you touch the him, God will do the work. And if you there by yourself, go to the mirror. Look yourself step in the mirror and decree and declare this night that if I touch the him, God will do the work. Somebody give God a praise right now. Eight five five seven three zero oh, word. Eight five five seven three zero oh, word. This is an opportunity, and I'll tell you why. Because when the heavens come open, when the Lord ordained a thing for a season and a time, his hands is on it. Any other time, watch this. This right here can be classified as just a garment of tradition. It can be classified as a garment of customs. But when the Lord's anointing has a purpose for a thing, the thing is changed. Water, the Red Sea was just the Red Sea. It was just a body of water until God had need of it. Then the body of water became a highway. You better give God a praise in here. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost right there. I feel the Holy Ghost right there. Since I feel the Holy Ghost right there. The valley. The valley of dry bones. Was just a body. It was just a valley with a bunch of dead bones with no skin wasn't nothing but a massive graveyard. Typical of the result of any other battleground where there's so many dead that we don't even bother to dig a grave. We just leave the dead bones laying there. But the graveyard was just a graveyard until God had a need for an army. No, y'all don't know. Good Lord have mercy. I wish I had somebody in here. I wish I had somebody in here to, I wish I had somebody in here to praise God because you don't know what God is saying to y'all tonight. He talking to somebody tonight. He talking to somebody tonight. And I never show you. Uh, your situation was just a situation until God had a need for it. Listen, listen. Oh, 
Just another animal. Until God had need of a sound. It was just a ram's horn. Until God needed one to anoint David. Woo! Are you hearing what he's saying? Are you hearing what he's saying? This ain't nothing but some cotton. The strings ain't nothing but some knots. The collar ain't nothing but some dye. Until you had a situation. And now this becomes all that you need from God. Now that God has a need for it. Now that God has a need for it. a garment that belongs to a nationality or religion or tradition when the spirit of the Lord gets on it now this becomes a doctor in the sick room this become a lawyer in the courtroom good Lord have mercy this becomes peace of mind this becomes a mind regulator this becomes a heart picture this right here will stop the devil in his tracks this right here will bring the glory of God down in your situation why? because when God has a need for it your testimony to tell the power of what happened somebody said this I wish I had the faith to believe like you do Providence I wish I had the faith to believe the way you do somebody asked me a question how is it that you learned how to believe God like that and my answer was simple you believe God with all your heart when you ain't got nothing else to believe. Somebody better give God a praise right there. See, the reason why some people can't believe God because they got other stuff to believe. I just said something right there. The reason why people can't trust God because they got something else to trust in. The reason why people can't depend on God because they got something else they can depend on. The reason why people don't call on God because they got somebody else to call on. But if you find me a person that ain't got nobody else to call on, that ain't got nobody else to trust them, ain't got nobody else to lean on, can't depend on nobody else, I'll show you a person that have learned how to put their trust in God, to learn how to lean up on the everlasting arm of God. Who am I talking to in this place? Eight 
855 word I got to pray for these people now. 855 word Give me water. Give me water. Come on, Nettie. You won't have to sing this. I got to pray for these people now. 855 word 855-730-WORD. Your situation is calling you under this. Your circumstance is calling you. You don't have a choice in the matter. Because see, I've been doing the same thing. I've been buying them for my friends. I didn't gave them to the, Because see, listen, if you're going to be my friend and walk close to me, you're going to be on the cloth or you're going to get away from me. Because uh, I got to have friends now that know how to get to God. I got to have friends now that know how to hear from God. I'm not hearing y'all talk. I don't need nobody walking with me in their flesh. I'm not hearing y'all. I've been buying them and giving them to my family and buying them and giving them to my friends and I said I know you got one but you ain't got this one I know you got one from last year I know I gave you one two years ago but this one right here has a different assignment in it it is a brush all of destiny and authority it is the one where you cannot be denied it is the one that when you put it over you and you begin to speak what the Lord has given you to speak just like that woman said I heard the Holy Ghost said also tonight that this shawl is a shawl that will bring you immediate results immediate results and your blessing will not be delayed 855 730 word pick up the phone operators are standing by today is your day for divine deliverance come under the clock and watch the hand of God on your life somebody give God a shout 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 yes oh I need a drink I need a dream from the sanctuary. Sanctuary. Oh, come on. Give me water. Give me water. Give Give me water. Give me water. Give me water. I need a drink. I need a drink drink from the sanctuary.
this garment in your life. You need this necklace in your life. You need to make a covenant with God. You done made a lot of promises. We're not talking about a promise now. We're talking about a covenant. A covenant with God. Jesus. Ask the Lord tonight. As we leave off of the air, could probably go back on, on the line, the word network.org and watch the program again. But you need to ask the Lord, give me water. My soul is thirsty. I need a drink because I'm longing for more of you. For more of you and less of me. So my cry tonight, and as a prophet of God, I can hear the cry of the nation. I can hear the cry of countries everywhere. I can hear this cry wailing out in the spirit. I can hear it far out in the distance. That the world is thirsty. People are killing because they're thirsty. I don't know, Shandaya. Evil is on the rampage because people are thirsty. Because the water represents the spirit. And without the presence of the Lord, every vile spirit is loosed. But when the people of God nationwide begin to ask for the water of God, we will bind the hand of the enemy. And he can do no more than has what been prophesied in these times. And even that, he will have to remain on schedule. 855-730-WORD. Pick up the phone. Operators are standing by. Ask the Lord when you get your garment. $107 is nothing in comparison to what God is about to do. But when you get this garment, I want you to recognize it's not tradition, it's not customs. Yeah. Now that the Lord has need of it, it is what the Lord has sent to connect you to him. And he will supply your every need. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the unbeatable name of Jesus. In the matchless name of Jesus. My God. Give me God bless you. Oh, I need a drink from the sanctuary. Oh, give me water. Oh, DVD copy of any of our original programs. Please call our prayer partners and sow a seed of $20. Don't just watch the word. Receive a DVD and spread the word.